John Twist of University Motors. Today we're going to remake a video that I made a long time ago. It might be my video number seven. I'm not sure in that, I mean, I'm not sure of the number. In that, I explain why you can adjust the valves quickly on your MG, and I adjust them on an MGTF, and the whole video is seven minutes long. There was a uh, file size limit back in the day on YouTube that's no longer there. You can put up a video now that's an hour long, no problem. So we're gonna make this one a little slower, a little more understandable, a whole lot fresher with this super duper uh, fineness that Max has in his camera here. Uh, high definition or I don't know, there's another one, 4G, I don't know, 4G something. Anyway, it's gonna be a whole lot better. So this is the MGA that we're gonna uh, adjust the valves on. We're getting a charge on it right now. Um, battery's flat dead. Always pay attention to the posts on the battery because you can charge the battery up backwards. You might think that you left it positive ground, but three years ago you changed it to negative ground. If it's flat dead, battery will charge up just fine, but it won't work well for a long time. Battery's designed to run with one, one post and, and a, another post. That's why they're labeled. So anyway, <clears throat> Let's take a look at how this camshaft works. Now we're going to look at the full 720 degrees that the engine turns for one cycle. All right, the piston goes up and down two times per revolution, and there are two revolutions in the cycle. So here we've got zero degrees, we've got 360, and we've got 720. And then we've got our bottom dead centers here. So if we look at the motion of the piston, as it goes down and back up again, this is the inlet stroke. This is the compression stroke, power, and exhaust. So let's go back and look at Mr. Inlet Valve and see what he's doing. Remember, he opened at 16 degrees before top dead center, and he closes at 56 degrees after top dead center. So he's open for about this amount of time. The rest of the time, this is 252 degrees, so the rest of the time, the other almost 500 degrees, it's closed, okay? So this is important to remember in understanding why you can adjust the valves quickly. It's open for 252, but then it's closed for about 500 degrees. Let's take a look at a camshaft. So this is a camshaft out of a B-series engine. You know it's a five main because there's no tack drive on the back. This guy turns clockwise and he turns one revolution for every two revolutions of the crank. Okay. So when you go to your workshop manual to adjust your valves, it says adjust number eight with number one fully open. Let's look at this relationship. See how the lobe is high on one and that same lobe over here on eight is low. They are opposites. So if we turn um, our cam just a little bit, we'll see that number seven is fully open and number two is fully closed because we're on the back side of it. So there's this relationship. Here we've got three and six. Three's all the way up, six is all, all the way down and we can even go further. Here we go, five is all the way open and four is all the way down, all, we're on the back side. So there's this relation back and forth. Look at this cam. See, see this nick on the side of the cam? That's from the, that's from the connecting rod hitting it, see, because the connecting rod comes around twice every revolution of the, of the camshaft. So that's, that's, uh, that's, that's the horrible banging you hear when you lose a rod bearing. It's not the rod banging on the crank. It's the, it's, it's the rod banging against the camshaft. 
So the workshop manual again says adjust, adjust number one with number eight fully open. But does number eight have to be fully open? Fully open? Look, it's closed here, it's closed here. It's closed here, it's closed here, it's closed here, it's closed here. Oh my gosh, I just saw more marks. They lost the number one, um, number, rod, number one rod two. This is a foobard camshaft. Anyway, um, you can see that on the back side of this, of, of this lobe, you know, for, for a full turn of the engine, the, ca the cam follower doesn't change position. This is all the flat, the flat part of the cam. So number eight doesn't have to be fully open to adjust number one. Okay, I mean, give me that. <clears throat> so it can be here or here or here or wherever, watching that, that number eight lobe and you're still okay. So let's look at another interesting thing about the cam. Is that two valves are all, almost totally open at the same time. One and three, two and seven, two and um, four, five, Help me out here. And then we've got six and eight. And four and seven. So those valves, those valves are both open about at the same time. They're certainly open far enough to adjust the opposite valve. You put an imaginary center line through the through the center cam bearing, a mirror, you'll see that there, you've got this relationship. You're going to adjust number eight when number one is fully open. You're going to adjust number six when number three is fully open. Round and round we, we go. We're going to adjust number seven with number two fully open. But we can adjust two valves at once because these are our Almost, almost open at the same time. We can adjust the opposite two valves, one and three, come over and become eight and six. The number of the valve that's fully open added to the valve which should be adjusted equals eight on our cars. And um, you know, in an MGC or a big Healy would equal 13. So we're going to go over to the MGA, we're going to show you how the valves open and close, and they're going to adjust them. So here we are at the MGA, here we got our valve cover. In fact, this is an MGB engine, um, <clears throat> 64 through 68 MGB engine uh, in, this, um, in this MGA, but all the engines are the same, they all fit with changes sometimes on the front or rear engine bearing plates. You can switch the engines around a lot. It's very nice. So the MGA gives you these nice little flutes on the radiator to store nuts and bolts in. Makes it real handy. Right away I see that, uh, well, I was going to say that our, uh, what are these, a 1B2624 I think. Um, these spacers weren't quite right but Oh, now we got to get the valve cover off, and we have the problem with the last owner who uh, glued the valve cover on. So give me a moment while I get a hammer. Big hammer. Oh my gosh. That guy was on there, and I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, when you go to put the valve cover gasket on, you put it on the valve cover. Clean this off, put down the, your, your gasket goo, the right stuff, uh, ultra black, put the gasket onto here and flip it upside down and put it on the bench. Push on it, get it set, make sure it's straight, and just let it cure 
while you're doing all the rest of the work that you're going to do inside of here. Because if you glue it to the top of the engine, then it doesn't want to come off and breaks and all that kind of stuff. So when you go to put him back on, you put him on with grease, lots and lots of grease on the underside of that gasket. So we'll just get rid of him for now. Remember that before you adjust the valves, you must torque the head. That's a different video, or this one would be too long. You have to torque the head, and that's what we're gonna do now off camera. So here we are at the MGA. Actually, it's a couple of days later. We've not been able to maintain screen continuity. I'm in a different outfit. Um, the, uh, the car is in a different place. It's rained for a couple of days. Anyway, while we were off camera, I, I backed off each of these head nuts in succession, loosened it, oiled it, and tightened it back down to 55 pounds in the spiral pattern that they show you in the workshop manual. It's just a spiral pattern outwards. Anyway, I, I slacked off all of those, oiled them all, and torqued them all down. So the head is now tightly affixed to the cylinder block, and we can go ahead and adjust the, the valves. Should you adjust the valves hot or cold? I would say adjust them hot, because that's when the car runs. That's when you want them to be correct. But if you take a foot of steel and take it from zero Celsius to 100 Celsius, the expansion on one foot of steel is one ten thousandth of an inch. So whether this engine is hot or cold isn't going to make any difference on the valve lash. And this is cold, that's why I say that. So when you shut the engine off, when you, the engine comes to rest, the pistons are always halfway up their stroke. They're either here or here, just the way it is. Okay? Shuts off, pistons are about on a level. And when they're like that, two valves are always open. So if two valves are open, we know we can adjust the opposite two valves. So let's take a look at this engine right now and see which valves are, are open. And we'll see, I don't know if our cameraman can come around to this side, but we can see that these, that these, springs, these springs are tight. This one's loose. Um, those are tight, which means that these valves are in somewhere along in their open ramp. So since those are open, we can adjust the other two valves. And the other two valves from this are these, the opposite two valves. And there's always that relationship back and forth. Additionally, the number of the valve which is to be adjusted added to the valve which is closed always equals nine. Six cylinder guys, that's uh, 13. So let's go ahead and adjust these. So we've talked all about how we can adjust them. And now we're just going to adjust them. I got a 15 thousandths feeler because this is an MGA uh, 1600. Actually, it's an MGB engine. I use an offset wrench here, um, which uh, keeps my knuckles from getting completely torn up. The adjuster thread is 5 16 24. So that's approximately 40 thousandths per revolution. So I'm going to bump the engine over once. These two valves are open now. These two valves are open now. The opposite of these valves are these valves. 4 plus 5 equals 9. 2 plus 7 equals 9. So I'm going to adjust the opposite two valves. We'll make sure these are all right. He feels pretty good. These are really nice. He's a little sticky. That's from wear on the underside. We'll try it again. Now these two valves will open. Okay, so these two valves are open. We can adjust these two. Woo, that's, that's a lot snugger than the rest. So the question is, how snug sh should they be? And the answer is consistently snug. You, some, people, some people have them a little tighter than other people, but the, but the point is, that all of them feel the same. 
Now, some valve manufacturers will, will give you different um, valve lashes to maximize what you're buying in their expensive camshaft. So if it says adjust the inlets to 18 and the exhaust to 21, do it. Well, the engine's going to sound ra a little rattly up there, but you've paid for the cam, so follow their instructions to get the maximum um, benefit out of this cam that you've purchased. But the original settings are 15 thousandths. <coughs> Those are done, and our last two, the opposite of two and five is four and seven, based on this imaginary mirror center line. So two is open, we're going to adjust number seven. He's all right, we don't have to adjust him at all. Number five is open, and number four Oh, it's a little tiny looser than the rest, you know. When we had uh, Kent Prather on talking about building B-series engines that'll turn eight, 9,000 RPM, the takeaway from his talk, much of which escaped me about balance, was consistency and uh, that the the valve, the valve lash is exactly the same, and the valve height is exactly the same. It goes on and on and on. That's it. That's all there is to adjusting the valves. We talked a long time about you know which valve is open and uh, 252 degrees, leaving you know the better part of 500 degrees on an open ramp on the back side of the cam. And you do not have to adjust number one with number eight fully open. Number eight can be anywhere close to open, and you can still adjust number one. So that's how you can do it very, very quickly. Let me show you the valve cover. So this is a moss gasket. Moss makes absolutely beautiful, beautiful gaskets that work. The nice thick cork, but the trick is to hold it to the valve cover. This is true on all B-series and A-series engines, all the MGAs, Bs, uh, C's, uh, it's not a B-series engine, and um, all the, the midgets and the 1100s and the minis and so forth. Um, clean, clean the old gasket off by taking a torch if you have to, your propane torch and warming it underneath and get all the old gasket off. Scrub it off, get it nice and clean, clean it with some carburetor cleaner. Use some ultra black or the right stuff and lay a bead all the way around, smooth it with your finger I just did this this morning. Too bad my video crew didn't get here on time to take a picture. Just kidding. Um, and uh, anyway, smear it and then put the, put the gasket on, make it fit, turn it over, push it on the tabletop, seat it, just seat it, make sure it's okay, check it again, and we'll see that it's not slipped out of position. So this guy's all set to go. All we have to do is apply a liberal amount of grease on the bottom side to it and put him back on. That's the end of our video. So you can adjust your valves extremely quickly on any MG uh, just by bumping the engine over, leaving the spark plugs in. You saw what I did. If you don't get it, watch it again. If you don't get it, watch my, I, what, my number seven video from, I don't know, the year 2000, where I do it on a TF, also where you can't see very well. We'll do this again on an MGB sometime. Till then, safety fast. Mm -hmm.